Hello, it's Stu here from DIYmusic.co.uk with another FL Studio tutorial. This time we're looking at creating and using some send effects channels in FL Studio. Now I've got a little loop set up. You may recognize this from my sidechain compression tutorial. So we've got a kick, bass and some chords which are all being bounced through this side type, side chain track. I've also added a snare and sort of pluck instrument to that. So now we have this. Okay, it's very basic, but you probably want to add some effects to, uh, to some of these. Now you could just add them straight onto the track, but what we're gonna do is use effects send channels or send channels where the effects sit on a separate track and you route the sound through that track. There's a few reasons why you might want to do this. Uh, one is to save CPU if you've got uh, lots of tracks you want to add reverb to. You just have one reverb track and uh, route them all to that track. So you only need one instance of the reverb plugin. Uh, the other thing is that you can put effects or uh, processes on the effect itself. I'll, that'll be clearer in a minute when I show you. Uh, but you can do that without affecting the original signal, which is great. And you can also do some tricks with routing effects to other effects and all this kind of stuff. We'll keep it simple and we'll start by creating two send channels over here. First of all, we'll have a reverb. And then we'll have a delay. Okay, and on those we will stick... I'm going to use just uh, stock plugins from FL Studio, so we'll use the uh, Fruity, Fruity Reverb on that one, and Fruity Delay 2 on that one. Now the important thing is that you do not want to hear any of the original signal going through here, you just want to hear the effect. So once you've chosen your presets, it will just I mean, you can, you'll want to tweak that and make it work, but we'll just work with the preset for now. We've got a big reverb. If you look here, you've got the dry and the wet signal levels. You want it to be 100% wet, so if you hit reset that, that'll go to 100%. You don't want any dry, so you don't want to hear any of the original signal. Take that down to zero. The delay works slightly differently. There's no wet... Uh, there's no way of adjusting the wet signal, but there is a dry. Take that down to zero, you won't hear anything going through there. So that is essentially two um, send effects channels ready to go. We'll just uh, set the delay to three beats, the cut, ping pong it and have a bit of a pan just so it sounds interesting. Okay, so here's our clean sound without using any of those effects. If you want to hear some of that reverb on the, on the plug sound, then you need to root the plug to the reverb by clicking on this little arrow here. So here what I did then was uh, turn the actual reverb off and on and also turn the original signal off and on so you can hear they are separate. And then you can route that to the delay as well. So now you've got options to uh, change the volume of delay and the reverb completely separately of the original signal. You could also route another instrument to one of those. So if you want some reverb on the snare, send it in. The 
other thing you can do is control the amount of the original signal that goes through to that send effects channel. And this is very useful if you wanted to, for example, have a bit of delay on the snare, but not as much as you've got on the plucks. So you can still route that snare to the delay, but then where you've got this little dial here, that controls how much of the signal goes through. So if I were to play it without changing that at all, you'll hear quite a lot of delay on the snare. But if I wanted just a tiny bit of snare to get through, turn that right down and you hear the difference. So with that, you've got a few options to fine tune the uh, the effects by controlling the volume of the effect, controlling the amount of the signal that goes through to the effect, and also doing things like EQ, which then, excuse me, which will then just apply to the effect. So if you wanted to cut some bass off of that reverb, you could. <laughs> That is basically how how it works. So you've created two send channels, you've sent your plugs and your snare through to them. You could also get a little bit more creative by routing your send channels to other send channels. So maybe we want to hear that reverb on our delay. So why not route the delay through to the reverb as well? I'll just play that so you can hear the difference. So now there's a bit of reverb on our delay. And then we've already got this sidechain track mix, uh, set up here, which is, it's got a limiter on it, which uh, if you see my other tutorial is a basic sidechain compression setup where this kick is triggering uh, compression on anything that goes through here. At the moment, that is the chords of the bass. So if I play, So you can hear there how the kick is making the uh, chords and the bass turn down every time it hits. Why not put our reverb through there as well? I don't know if you saw there, I turned off the reverb route to the master, so it's only going through the sidechain track. I could have done that by right clicking here and route to this track only. That would have had the same, that would have had the same effect. So there you go. There's a few applications. Obviously you can put any effect you want on your send. You can route them as many times as you want and uh, get quite experimental with that to get different effects. I'll leave it at that for now. That was a sort of basic introduction to using send effects channels. Um, I hope you find that useful and you can do something with it. Uh, please check out my other tutorials on uh, diymusic.co.uk and uh, leave us a message or uh, get in touch if you've got any questions. Thank you very much.